And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jean Mack, and we are on the air with breaking news. The U.S. Marshal Service is about to hold a press conference right now, giving more details about the arrest of 39 year old Matthew Dion in Jacksonville, Florida. It looks like the newly confirmed police chief, Nick Willard, is stepping to the podium along with U.S. Marshal Service representatives to tell us more about the arrest of the man wanted for the murder of his parents, Robert and Connie Dion. 14 months ago in their Manchester home. Authorities were tipped off that he was staying at a local hotel and arrested him without incident around 10 o'clock this morning in Orange Park. That's about 20 minutes south of Jacksonville. It's a suburb of Jacksonville. Now, Matthew Dion was being sought on both state and federal warrants for the murder of his parents in their Manchester home on arson and possession of child pornography charges. Let's listen in. Come on. My wife is like sick of the Nick Willard show. She's <laughs> been sick for 20 years. Okay, good afternoon, guys. Before we go live, uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. Make sure all phones are off on vibrate. Um, and I'm going to introduce our guests here, uh, some of our speakers, so that you all have it. Everybody should have a handout, and there'll be a sign in list out back before you leave. If you could just sign in, that'd be great. Um, so, present for today's press conference, uh, they'll be in the back. And actually, his, since we're not live, <coughs> somebody in the crowd. Okay, pres <coughs> present today for the uh, press conference will be Assistant Chief Nick Willett of the Manchester Police Department, uh, Captain James Flanagan, who's the commander of the investigative division, uh, Chief of the Homicide Unit, Attorney General's Office, Jeff Strelzen, uh, United States Marshal Dave Cargill, uh, Chief Deputy Brenda Michelson. Deputy Marshal Jeff White and Deputy Marshal Greg Murano. Thanks again for attending, Chief. Let me know. All set. Um, good afternoon. Um, we are here today to announce the arrest of Matthew Doyon um, for the murder of his adoptive parents on March 24, 2014. Um, he is currently being charged with two counts of second degree murder and other serious charges. Um, I'm going to talk a um, little about the actual arrest. I'll leave that up to the U.S. Marshal Service. Um, I will um, say that um, Deputy U.S. Marshal Greg Morano and Detective Sergeant Joe Mucci of the Manchester Police Department have walk, worked doggedly to um, see that Matthew Doyen was arrested. Um, through their efforts uh, and the resources of uh, the uh, partnership between the Manchester Police Department and the U.S. Marshal Service, um, I couldn't be more proud of um, their efforts. Um, and it's good to get this gentleman off the street um, and bring him to justice here in the state of New Hampshire. So without further ado, um, I will turn it over to um, U.S. Marshal Dave Cargill. Well, good, <coughs> good afternoon. Um, we are pleased today to announce the arrest of Matthew Dion. Uh, Matthew Dion was placed on the United States Marshal Service Top 15 list back in April. Uh, this allowed, allowed us to be able to throw more resources at uh, finding Mr. Dion. Um, Mr. Dion was, uh, has, has been accused of a uh, very serious crime, and uh, the Marshal Service took this um, endeavor very strongly and working together with our partners in Manchester, uh, I can tell you it couldn't have been more seamless. One of the things, though, I really would like to thank is I'd like to thank the media. The media uh, has helped us in this case immensely, uh, and just most recently, doing a media blitz down in, in Florida uh, led us to uh, some tips to, to give us tips on Matthew Dion's whereabouts. Matthew was um, uh, was located uh, doing some construction work. He was actually painting uh, at a motel. He was found. Um, he originally. Uh, uh, originally gave us a fake name and then uh, decided that he would come, tr come truthful and tell us his name was Matthew Dion. The anonymous tips that came about led us um, to uh, Orange Park, Florida. And there was a motel that was situated there that he was been working at. He also had been staying there, so he was kind of getting free uh, living quarters. The agencies involved in this arrest were the Florida Regional Fugitive Task Force, the Jacksonville Division, Tampa Division, Tallahassee Division, Orange Park Police, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, and the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Uh, I, can't, I can't stress enough the partnership that we had with the press. 
you guys giving us the tool of getting Matthew's face out there really, really helped us. Um, that along with the public, the public turned around when they saw the media blitz down there, gave us three great leads, which led us back to back to back and to bring Matthew into justice. So with that, uh, we're very pleased to announce that today, and I'll leave it up to you guys. Questions? Was there any struggle <coughs> you took him into custody? Nope, not at all. He, uh, there was a surveillance done for a little while. Um, Matthew was believed to be armed uh, and dangerous, so we decided to wait until uh, he was seen outside, and uh, when he was approached, he was um, very calm. Were any weapons found in his room? Uh, I don't know. I haven't been in his room. <laughs> but um, the authorities down there will be taking some type of action to do a search warrant down there and see what we can find. Is this a federal case? No, it is not. No. Nope. It will be prosecuted by the New Hampshire Attorney General's Office. What kind of relationship did he have with anyone, or was he alone? Um, through all our investigation over the whole year that we've been looking for him, we have found out that he, he would befriend people. Uh, oftentimes he, uh, he would become chatty with people at a coffee shop. Uh, this particular couple of leads came up that uh, he did. He befriended another woman down there and um, they were at a party where they were introduced to another individual and one thing led to another that uh, when the media blitz went out, that individual went, that's the guy I met last week. So he has been, has been out befriending some people. Was he living under a false identity? Or? Yes, well, we believe he was. We believe he was li um, living under the name of Cameron Bouchard. Bouchard? Bouchard. You talked about Georgia also and Florida. Do you feel he's mostly been in Florida, or do you know that he's been moving, a moving target for a year? or? I don't know how often he, how frequently he moved, but um, we do know that he was in Atlanta for a while. We do know that he was in Tampa for a while, and then now we know him to be in Orange Park. It's been more than a year. How, how did he elude police? What, what were his tactics to um, hide out for so long? Well, he's, he's, a, he's an intelligent individual. Um, I would say that he probably just laid low. He you know, didn't draw attention to himself. He, he found gainful employment, uh, did what he would, had to do. And, um, he, just trying to, he was trying to stay out of the public light. Um, but that's where the, the public and the press actually helped us to, the more eyes we had looking for him, the better we were. The most recent woman that he befriended, was he is he actually staying with her? She had a little girl, maybe? Or, or is he staying alone in that motel? I'm not sure how that all played out. Uh, I do know a tip came from a friend of theirs. Um, but I don't know if he's how long they were staying together, if they were staying together, or was he just visiting. And I do know that he was living at the motel that he was working at. So I just don't know if the, how the relationship went. Is she, could she be implicated in this at all? I don't think so. Were, were they boyfriend and girlfriend? I don't know. Is he aware of the charges that are against him? Has he, has he said anything about what he's charged with? <coughs> right now he's charged with a f as a fugitive from justice down there. Uh, I'm sure it's been explained to him that there are charges pending in New Hampshire uh, that he's probably made aware of them by now. How does arraignment work? <coughs> he's going to be charged as a fugitive from justice down in Florida. Um, he can, he can uh, he'll have a hearing. He can either uh, waive those, um, that charge and then he'll be extradited back or he could fight those charges down in Florida. If he decides to fight them, then there'll be an, uh, a governor's warrant issued from the state of New Hampshire down to Florida to be signed by both governors and then can be brought back that way. Any sense on how that's going to go? I don't, I don't know. Will he be before a judge today or is there some delay on that? It's possible. He'll get appointed counsel down there for the extradition proceedings only. Where is he? Is he at a Clay County um, uh, jail? Yes. What's the proper name? Clay County Jail. Can you enumerate the charges here? He's uh, wanted on two counts of second degree murder, uh, one count of arson and one kind of uh, possession of child pornography. That was three counts of child pornography.
It's child possession of child pornography. You have been listening to the U.S. Marshal Service announcing that one of their top 15 most wanted fugitives, Matthew Dion, has been captured in Florida. The manhunt that stretched from Manchester nationwide has come to an end with the capture of Dion, wanted for the murders of his parents in their Manchester home last year. Um, pretty much putting his picture out there. Um, we did a lot of media uh, up here with, uh, with you all. I know WMUR and ACN were great doing um, uh, individual uh, segments on him. Um, I know that uh, some of those your segments were sent down to your affiliates. Um, we then would send down uh, from the Florida office, send out press releases and pictures from that end of it, uh, just to get that wider range of media coverage. So you were pretty well, that was the last place we've seen him. Last place we had contact uh, that we had a lead on, so we got to start there, and, and it worked out. Did it seem like he had a lot of resources, a lot of money? Um, I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he was working. He was. I don't know if he was working for his own board, or was he working for his board and a little pay? But he was working down there. As a what about? The, I believe that there was a car that's yet to be found. Was the car? There was a car down that was recovered that fit the description of the one that was stolen in Tampa. Um, and until that's been uh, totally investigated, I, I don't know if it's the same, but it, it, it looks the same. What kind of car is that? It was a Hyundai Elantra. Wasn't there one missing from here, too, that's never been found? That one has been recovered. That one, yeah. Yes. <coughs> that also was a Hyundai Elantra. Nissan. Nissan. It was the United States Marshal Service. Just so I'm clear, the tip that ultimately led authorities to Dion was from that woman who he befriended <coughs> just about a week earlier, <laughs> so about a week ago? Um, not aware. We don't want to give specific, specific information about where information comes from. We want the public to feel comfortable in calling us and providing tips. Um, it was more than a week ago that some information was developed that was furnished to us last night. It was from... So we acted very quickly in following up with this lead. Would you be able to say that car is just a program? This is Greg Morano. He's, the, he's one of the uh, lead deputies. Thank you. Hi there. Yes, we've been following up on a number of leads throughout this investigation. Uh, la yesterday evening, a significant lead came in, in, which we acted very quickly on. The individual who will remain anonymous uh, provided some information that directed us to Orange Park, Florida. And there were some other s significant leads that followed up to that initial lead. So everything fell into place for us for a safe, safe apprehension today. Could you be issuing $25,000 We will look into that. There may be several people that may be uh, getting a piece of that reward. Is that the maximum number now, $25,000? It's $25,000 that was offered by the U.S. Marshal Service. I believe there may be an additional reward offered by MetLife Insurance, That's if right. I'm correct. That's right. So if the U.S. Marshal has 25, there's 5,000 more. So That's my understanding. Thanks. Thank you. You said that he was seen at a party. Can you give me an idea of a party? Was it like on a boat and the river? Was it a, was it a drinking party? Or what? Oh, that's a boat. Thank you. Um, unless you have any questions for um, Assistant Attorney General Jeff Strelzin, does anybody have any questions for the Attorney General? No? Yes, please. Sure. Uh, so what happens is uh, the defendant gets arraigned in Florida on a fugitive from justice charge. Uh, that charge is the charge that allows Florida to hold him. It's for our underlying state charges that you've already heard. Uh, he'll be afforded counsel down there in Florida on the extradition proceeding. Uh, at that point, he'll consult with his attorney and he'll decide whether or not he wants to agree to extradition and come back to New Hampshire or whether or not he wants to fight extradition. So those are essentially his options. Um, if he agrees to come back to New Hampshire, then obviously he'll come back quicker. If not, it'll simply take longer to go through the process. Uh, once he gets back to New Hampshire, he'll be arraigned in the Manchester District Court on his pending charges. Uh, and after the arraignment, uh, probable cause hearing will be set. So once he's back in New Hampshire, we'll continue just like it would in any other normal homicide case. 
For second-degree murder in New Hampshire, the maximum is life. There's no minimum sentence for second-degree murder. Can you give us the idea why second-degree murder as opposed to first-degree murder? Well, right now, those are the, those are the current charges. Uh, he has not been indicted yet, so uh, we look at the evidence in a case and make a charging decision. It's sometimes a preliminary decision, and sometimes the charges are changed when we go to the grand jury. So for now, those are the pending charges. Obviously, the charges will be presented to the grand jury, and they'll ultimately decide what the charge is. So it could stay the same or it could change. Is there any indication there might be charges against additional people in this case? No. So far, no other charges. We believe that this is the only person who will be charged in connection with this crime. When he returns to New Hampshire, will there be a bond on him, or will he be held no bond? So the way it works in New Hampshire is the district court has no jurisdiction to set bail in a murder case, so he'll be held without bail. If he doesn't buy extradition, do you think he could be back here early this week? It just all depends on the mechanics of going down there and then securing his release and bringing him back up. Um, but obviously, again, he has to consult with his attorney down there and decide what course he wants to take. All right. Is there anyone else that, you, um, that New Hampshire authorities are seeking with such serious charges? Not any homicide charges that I can think of. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, oh, yeah? yeah? No, I just have a quick question for Assistant Chief Sure. I'm just hoping that you can speak to what this means for the city of Manchester and the community that you've been through um, a lot over the past 15 months or so. Well, you see, just by the uh, efforts that were made um, by Deputy U.S. Marshal Greg Morano and uh, Detective Sergeant Mucci and, and all their colleagues, um, as well as Channel 9 and NACN, uh, you, it was clear um, the way the community came together, um, the way law enforcement pulled their resources together, that this was very important. Um, this was a, uh, a very sad uh, double homicide. And I think um, it's, it's a moment for us to appreciate the hard work of you, the community, and the media, um, the partnerships that we've fostered in law enforcement. The U.S. Marshal Service is tremendous. Um, I envy the fact that they get to hunt bad guys like they do. And, um, and in this particular case, um, um, Deputy Morano wouldn't stop. Um, when I say dogged, it's, it's, it's no joke. He did a tremendous job, and I was, it was great to see him have an opportunity to stand at the podium, actually, because he's the one that did the work um, and has the most knowledge. So. Um, it, it means a great deal. I think it's going to mean a great deal, which is why uh, we wanted to have a press conference. Um, we wanted to show just how important this arrest was. It's a significant arrest. Um, I think you had asked the U.S. Marshal, um, you know, how he was able to evade capture. I think he was just hiding in plain sight, which is why it was important that they do the constant media blitzes to get his face out there. Uh, because he was difficult to recognize, because he was, he was seemingly a, a normal, average, regular guy that you just wouldn't pick out as, as a murderer. But he is a murderer, or he's an alleged murderer anyways. Um, so they continue to put out the media blitz. You continued um, to partner with law enforcement to um, bring him home um, to us so he can uh, answer um, for the charges against him. You have a team going down from Manchester to Florida today. What was their role and who went? Well, under the advice of my attorney, I was told not to comment on that. <laughs> Uh, really not my attorney, but um, <laughs> um, I'm deferring to the Attorney General's office insofar as making comments about certain, <coughs> certain things uh, investigatively or otherwise. Thank you. All right, without any further questions, thank you very much for coming today.